and a warm welcome to Your Health Matters. Now here it's all about creating awareness about health related issues, hoping that we can all be inspired to take charge of our health. As they say, you can have everything in this world, but without good health, it all ceases to matter. I am Susan Mulderi. Now, before we get things started, I would like to make a request. Please subscribe to my channel uh, if you haven't already. And also try and share this far and wide so that I can be able to reach more people. Okay. Okay. So let's kick things off. Now, we're going to continue with our conversation on COVID-19. And I would like to share an experience I had a couple of days ago. So I went to town, the Central Business District, to try and have a couple of my gadgets fixed. And I observed a number of things. So I used a public service uh, vehicle and um, it was quite interesting and very commendable because there's some sense of social distancing. But once I got to town, things were different. So this fundi of mine, um, I observed a number of things. First, he does not shake hands. Uh, in fact, he does, uh, whenever anyone would come to say hi to him, you know, he would do that. That thing we're being told to do, which is good. But then again, as much as he does not shake hands, I noticed that there was a lot of um, exchange of cash, you know, transactions using paper money, exposing himself. Now, the other thing, his shop is quite popular because quite a number of people were coming with samples of stuff, finding out if he has it or not. Now, he would take these samples, you know, kind of look at it, you know, oh, no, 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 and check what make it is or, you know, and go like, oh, I have it or I do not have it, exposing himself. So I asked him, boss, ish. Are you not afraid of coronavirus and he asked me what coronavirus like ah covid 19 what everyone is talking about and he told me ah even you you believe this coronavirus and i told him yes there is coronavirus and as we are talking other people could hear our conversation and they came to join in and wow a lot of people still believe that this is fake news that there's no coronavirus in fact one person there was telling me that he believes that the Kenyan government is so desperate that it's willing to say that the country has coronavirus just so that it can have its debt cancelled or get money from donor. Anyway, so we went on and on. I'm telling the new guys, you know, the World Health Organization is saying the other, the other, the other the government is saying this. And uh, clearly there was no convincing them. In fact, they asked me a very interesting question. If I know anyone personally or if I've seen anyone with my own <laughs> eyes that has COVID-19 and I haven't. So they told me, there you have it. This thing is not here. Anyway, later I went home very disturbed because this attitude that we have, that seeing is believing is really going to mess us up. Coronavirus is there. Anyway. As fate would have it, a couple of days later, I learned that a friend of mine, Agina, had tested positive for coronavirus, which was shocking, you know, like this is the first person that I know that has COVID-19. So I reached out to him. He's currently in isolation and he'll be there for quite a number of days. And uh, the good thing, and we thank God for this, is that his symptoms are not as severe. In fact, he is doing very well. I even saw a clip of him exercising. But uh, he was gracious enough to agree to talk to us via Skype. Now, you'll notice two things. One, um, he has a mask on. And uh, he tells me where he is. They're being told that they must wear a mask all the time. And then secondly, I also think it's good that he wears that mask because the other thing with COVID-19, there's so much stigmatization. So it's better that he covers up uh, just so that uh, his, you know, people don't call him out and things like that. Anyway, here he is with uh, his story. I hope you will be inspired. Agina, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, thank you so much for having me. I am doing much better now compared to how I was before. Uh, I'm in hospital uh, going through the 14-day mandatory isolation for patients who have tested positive for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And so how did we get here? You know, I only learned about this yesterday. And for me, it's quite shocking because as much as we know there's COVID-19, you're the first person that I know um, that has tested positive. How did you even find out uh, that you were positive for the virus? Ah, okay. Good question. 
luckily, uh, not luckily, personally, I know somebody who has uh, tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, so I knew that the numbers that are usually given by Mutahi Kagwe are numbers of real people. So anyway, when I came from Mombasa on Friday 3rd, I was having a severe headache. I decided to go to hospital on Saturday morning. I went to Karen Hospital where I was denied entry into the hospital because of the new GOK regulations on mandatory screening for COVID-19. I was, however, allowed to talk to a doctor outside the hospital. Behind the hospital, there was a tent placed for any person who is suspected to have infection. I was only allowed to go into the hospital while wearing a mask. Thereafter, I was given a referral to go to Mbagathi Hospital. That was on Saturday. I had to consult because there was nobody had told where I'd gone. The pain mm -hmm. was so severe, I didn't even tell anyone. I just took off immediately. If so it tell wasn't me, for the car. About this pain, what kind of pain were you feeling? It was a throbbing headache that was not ending. I took painkillers on, on top of painkillers. The headache was not going. The temperature was rising the whole night. So mm -hmm. that's how I opted to make sure that I am tested. So I was referred to Mbagathi. And, so uh, tell me I, something, Brenda, let uh, me just catch you short. You say that on Saturday you had to go home and wait to go to a hospital the next day. Yes. Why did you have to wait? Why did you not go immediately? Uh, when I consulted, I was told that the lines at Mbagathi were quite long at that time. And I was feeling so terrible. Mm -hmm. I was going to stand in queue where probably mm -hmm. there are hundreds people and again another thing is that if where you are tested is where you will be detained so i did not want to be detained at mbagati i decided that uh, since it's my health i'm better off paying something small so that i can be in a place of comfort the other thing is all this time because you almost seem certain that you knew that you had the coronavirus, even as you're experiencing these symptoms, you knew that you had it. No, 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 no. All ah. along, I knew I had malaria. Ah. Yeah, yeah. I suspected I had malaria. And uh, unfortunately, every minute I got, I was Googling uh, mm -hmm. malaria signs, symptoms, COVID-19 symptoms, COVID what for? So I, when I came to hospital, I told them I want to be checked malaria. They said they'll check malaria and COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as I told you on Saturday, uh, mm -hmm. I go to Agati. So on Sunday, uh, I called the hospital because if you are a COVID-19 patient, you are not supposed to come to hospital. You are supposed to call. You remember these adverts we've been hearing? You don't yes. come to, you call. So I called them and they explained to me what to do. Manage my fever and mm -hmm. in, I come and I call them when I'm in the car. I should not leave the car. When I came, I called. I was allowed to leave the car. I was given a seat elsewhere. And from that point, I was picked by one of the infection control nurses and taken to a place there where they would be doing the swabs for me. Yeah, so the swabs were done on, on Sunday and uh, I was told that the results will be communicated to me on phone in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Later on, I received a call after the 24 hours I received a call from public health and uh, they needed to clarify some details. Mm -hmm. I, I, people I had been in contact with, where did I go? How did I come? Such kind of questions. Mm -hmm. Which I, later on, I, I was telling the person, you tell me the result. The person mm -hmm. was insisting 
me, I'm just a clerk. I don't have the results. You'll mm -hmm. be called. Later on, somebody called me with a very sweet voice and saying, oh, no, you know this. Then she told me that I had tested positive for COVID-19. It was a shocker for me. They told me to immediately close my bedroom and take off to the nearest hospital. And nobody should be allowed to go into that room until it's fumigated by the public health officials. Um, if you don't mind me asking, uh, at this point, your family, where is your family and how much were you in contact with them? Okay, when I suspected that I was sick, I didn't know the sickness, I told them that they should not come to my room. So mm -hmm. we had my, they had to stay in other rooms. Okay. So there was no, like they would knock my door, put the, the plate down and to take off. And I was making sure that I was wearing a mask while in the house. All right. So now you, it, it's been tested. Um, what was the process there? And do you feel satisfied with how you were treated up until now? What, uh, what, what has been done to you? <coughs> Okay, what happened is that when I came to Nairobi Hospital, my understanding of uh, isolation is you are kept alone so that you are not reinfected by other people suffering COVID-19. Shock on me when I came and I found that we were sharing a ward with other patients of COVID-19 who are in different stages of recovery. So let's look at it this way. These guys are in, let's say, day five of quarantine. If a new person goes and they get reinfected, they have to start again day one. So it's a cycle. You can never end because after 14 days, if you are tested and you are positive, you have to remain. That's how it works. Mm. Okay, now let's focus again on you. And you, uh, you know, we are in the same group uh, because we work out together and you've been posting a lot. And one thing that I've, 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 I've noticed, one of the things is that uh, you don't seem to have severe symptoms. Secondly, mm -hmm. knowing you and how active you are in the gym and watching what you eat, you're, you're one of those people we could say that you live a really healthy lifestyle. Do you think this has anything to do with the fact that you do not have as much symptoms or, or what is it? Uh, I uh, am not a medic to be able to comment on that. However, I can say that my vitals are actually clear because, for example, my oxygen level, you get it's at 98%. Most of the people are below that. Uh, BP is quite okay. The only thing that I was having an issue with was temperature, and it's because there is an infection. I really think that working out is what has helped me. Because some of the people who I am with, uh, mm -hmm. I had somebody saying that he has a problem because he's a smoker. And uh, many doctors were surrounding the guy, giving him some additional things. And that's when I realized that this issue of smoking can really have some negative effects. In fact, that's one of the things I posted in our common group. Yeah, that we should stop smoking. And then I even saw that you're even exercising while you are uh, at the hospital. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, the way the isolation ward is, mm -hmm. you can't go out. Permanently you are in, and uh, there's no way of getting out. Okay, now so let's to um, fill in the time is to work out. Okay, um, as much as it has a physical toll on you, it also has an emotional impact. Can you just tell me how you're being able to deal with uh, all the fears that you might be having right now? My my most of my fears are to do with my family because. What about the results of my family members? If they test negative, I'll be extremely happy. But if anyone tests positive, it will be disheartening for me. 
that's my greatest fear. In fact, we are sup I'm supposed to see a psychiatrist because of that. Oh, we're running uh, low on Bachi. Is it me or you? I think it's me. But um, yeah, um, so what, what message do you have maybe to people out there who still think that perhaps COVID-19 is a foreign uh, disease, that the coronavirus is something that probably is affecting other parts of the world, but not here. COVID-19 is real. If it has not affected somebody you know, you may always assume that uh, it's not real people, but it's real people who are in hospital. And uh, people should take the precautions advised by government. I look around every day and I see Kenyans are jokers because they are not social distancing. They are not working from home. They are busy chatting as if everything is normal. This virus is real. And for your information, it's extremely painful. The pain that you go through, I would not want anyone to go through such pain. And if you don't mind my asking, how do you suspect that you got it? I have no idea. You know, the COVID-19 is a virus and uh, we can't even see it. So people have not been greeting. Handshakes were banned. Hugs were banned. So it's not contact. That It's not physical contact. This thing probably either is in the money or it's in the air. And I highly suspect it's in the air. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, Whether uh, it stays, stays in the air for 20 seconds, five seconds, I think it's in the air. Okay, and just generally, I know you've given the example of having to share a place with so many people, and perhaps it's understandable because considering we probably will not have space and things like that, but generally, what do you feel? Um, are we prepared, you know, from what you've seen, from how you're being handled? Are the officials taking this thing seriously? And are you being handled in a professional way? And also even for the medics themselves, do they know what is happening? Are they also protected? Okay, where I am, the medics are adequately protected. They are in the right gear. They are in full hazmat suits which is commendable. Uh, the other issues that I can mention is that the government is very successful in screening and testing of foreigners or people who came in because they were kept in quarantine and now they are being tested before being released. That part, the government has done pretty well, but for people internally, local transmission, the government has failed miserably, miserably and it's a PR exercise. If the real numbers were to be known, Kenyans would be in shock. Um, why do you feel that uh, the numbers are not represent, what we have right now is not representative of the true situation? Uh, because majority of the people assume that they will get all the symptoms that uh, they were told, but it's possible you may not have all the symptoms. And some yeah. people get it, and it comes like a mild flu, and it just disappears. So these people continue infecting others. Okay, so I know I've asked you this before, but just very quickly as we wind up, any message that you want to give out there for your friends, for just as uh, the community, just generally to Kenyans and anybody out there? What I would want to, them to know is that uh, COVID-19 is not a death sentence and uh, you can come out of it very strong. So don't stigmatize anyone who is uh, having COVID-19. That is number one, which people need to stop because every, everywhere I go, they ask, how did you get it? And I'm telling them, it's not something you can see with your eyes. Anyway, so people need to stay home and only move out when it's necessary because 
anytime you are moving out of your house, you are risking your family members. That's what I would say. That's my advice. Stay home. Okay. Stay home. Work from home. Protect your family. Okay. And also the other thing, okay, while you, you know, like for you, you look like uh, you're going to be a success story because you, you're really active. Uh, you're okay. Um, what would you say for other patients, perhaps that you've been able to interact with? Are they doing as well or uh, what? What's the state of most of the people that you've seen that have coronavirus? The younger people yeah. are having really good recovery stories as compared to the old people. That's one of the observations that I've made. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And an old person is not 90 years old. He's 50, some 55. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time and for agreeing to talk to us. Is there anything maybe I've left out that you probably want out there or to share with us? Uh, nothing. I think we've covered uh, all. I hope the message will get out there. COVID-19 is real and it's uh, affecting people. And uh, if people are not serious, many will die. That's my message. Okay. Thank you very much, Agina. And I'm wishing you a quick recovery. And I'm also praying for your family um, that um, they have tasted negative and uh, we come out of this. Thank you so much. Asante sana. Well, there you have it. And uh, just a few things I'd like to mention is that where he works, quite a number of people have tested positive for COVID-19 and they're currently on isolation. In fact, they even lost a colleague. Uh, that's that. But the other thing, it's really worrying because he mentioned the thing about local transmission. Government is more concerned about uh, the people that are coming in. Anyway, long and short of it is, you guys, there is coronavirus. And please, let's just do our best to ensure that we stay protected. Protect yourself and protect your loved ones. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to send them over. As I always say, I will try my level best to ensure that I reach out to a professional, a health professional who can answer and give you a legit answer. Well, until next time, again, please subscribe. But until next time, do take care of yourselves.